So Miraculous is crazy. <laughs> and no, I'm not talking about the messy release schedules of the episodes and the all over the place inconsistent animation. I'm talking about the storylines. In the six years, nearly seven, that I've been watching Miraculous, we've had a memory loss trope with Master Fu, an episode where Marinette uses the Black Cat Miraculous and Adrian uses the Ladybug Miraculous, three identity reveal episodes in which gets erased and doesn't move the plot forward, our beloved Cat Blanc who basically destroyed the entire world, including his girlfriend and father, and oh my gosh, I completely forgot the villain of the series fighting two teenagers one of which is his son for two pieces of jewellery just to revive his wife who is in a magically induced coma like enchanted sleep in the basement. And do you want to know the wildest part? The thing that just puts all of these wacky storylines I mentioned to shame? We haven't had an episode where our protagonist has been akumatized. Four seasons down the line and that's pretty wild to me. I mean we've had instances where she was nearly akumatized such as Zombie Zoo, Chameleon and Ladybug but that's it. Something or someone miraculously gets in the way of that. So what's up with that? And what brings me to making this video? Well, season 4 has been different. Whether that's different in a good way or different in a bad way, that's completely up to you to decide. I'd say season 4, like season 3, has been a hit or miss, with some amazing episodes and an actual developed and consistent storyline, but then you have episodes like Simpleman. Overall, I'd say season 4 has been really strong and enjoyable, especially with the whole storyline revolving the identity reveal with Alia and how Ladybug's newly found role as Guardian has affected her relationship with Cat Noir. But here's the thing, there is no way you can tell me that none of this points towards Princess Justice or Lady Misfortune, which is Marinette's accumulatization. So in this video brought to you by the one and only Your Girl The Cartoon Hotspot, I'll be sharing my thoughts and theories as to why Marinette's accumulatization is highly anticipated. This is probably me getting my hopes up, but if you're new to my channel, welcome, and be sure to give this video a thumbs up and click that bell button for post notifications. Without further ado, let's begin. So this video will be broken down into segments whereby I talk about how the season has been leading up to Marinette slash Ladybug getting accumulatized, why Marinette's accumulatization is important for the season, provided it's well written, possible ways she could get accumulatized, and the difference between Princess Justice and Lady Misfortune, and which one I'd personally prefer. If you've noticed, compared to the previous three seasons which followed a more episodic format, whereby you don't really need to watch the episodes in order to understand the overall plot, Season 4 is more story driven, and this means where a storyline or plot is stretched out over a couple of episodes and possibly the entire season. There's been quite a few storylines in season 4 that not all have been wrapped up and concluded, especially Luca's storyline and his role. And the whole situation with Rocketeer regarding Alia and Nino's identities being revealed to Adrian, who they don't know is Cat Noir and Ladybug doesn't know what's going on. Then we've had Felix and his storyline with the Graham Divinity Ring and him knowing Shadow Moth is his uncle Gabriel Agrest. Zoe being introduced and of course new heroes this season. The bigger storylines revolve around Alia and Lady Noir, but they all tie back to two specific plots that were introduced in the previous season, Cat Blanc and Master Fu renouncing his title as Guardian of the Miracle Box. So why and how does that link back to Marinette getting akumatized? The events of Cat Blanc were a lot. It changed Marinette in innumerable ways. After that, her whole perception of being a superhero and life in general had shifted. It quite literally traumatized her. Seeing your partner akumatized is one thing, but seeing the whole world destroyed right in front of your eyes completely desolate is another thing. But you wanna know what I think was the tipping point? That specific scene where Ladybug is underwater and she touches her body from the other timeline and it completely disintegrates in front of her. As in, dust. That is life changing and scarring. Nobody would ever be the same if they saw their dead body in front of their eyes. And what's worse is Marinette doesn't even know how it got to that point. I strongly believe that not only is she traumatized and completely shaken up, but it's the question of how did this happen? How could I let that happen? That's tearing her apart. It's hard to deal with trauma, but it's even harder to deal with it without any form of closure. And because she doesn't know what caused it, other than an identity reveal, she is going to be questioning her every move as a hero, second-guessing herself, doubting her decision-making. But it goes further. 
Cat Blanc and Miracle Queen take place between about two weeks. So after Ladybug faced Cat Blanc, she didn't really get the time to process that properly because a few weeks later, a mistake that she made led to Master Fu having to lose his memory by proclaiming her the new guardian. So you think of it like this, one thing on top of another just bombarding her and not leaving her breathing space to be a kid. I sincerely think if Marinette wasn't the guardian, she would have made significantly more progress in processing her Cat Blanc trauma because at least then the responsibility wouldn't be completely on her shoulders. But she's all alone. She can't turn to anyone for answers because now she's the one who should have all the answers. She's a student, a superhero, an aspiring fashion designer, and the guardian of powerful jewels and mischievous Kwamis. It's too much, which is why I'm glad she told Alia she's Ladybug. Cat Noir wouldn't have been a logical option considering everything I just mentioned. Like, yeah, Cat Noir deserves to know since he is her partner and has been from the very beginning. But if you witnessed your partner akumatized and the only reason you can think of for why that world was left in chaos was because you and your partner revealed your identities to one another, do you honestly think the first thing on your mind is to go, okay, I'm going to reveal my identity to my partner. And if you still don't understand my point, which is completely fine, think of it like this. Let's say you had really bad takeout food from a restaurant and it gave you food poisoning. Once you've recovered from that food poisoning, nobody in their right mind would order from that very same restaurant that gave them food poisoning in the first place. No, you'd be cautious and find another restaurant. A weird analogy, but the same applies to Marinette. She decided that the next best option was to tell Alia, someone she trusts just as much as Cat Noir. What people don't understand is that Marinette doesn't trust Alia more than Cat Noir. She trusts them equally. The problem is Marinette doesn't trust herself. That's what trauma, especially trauma in Marinette's case, did to her. But she knew she had to tell someone. Her mental health was declining. It was unhealthy for her to be dealing with so much alone. But of course, every action, whether good or bad, has a reaction. Every choice has a consequence. And the consequence of that is Lady Noir's strained relationship. Unintentionally, by depending so much on Alia, Ladybug has been leaving Cat Noir out. That doesn't mean she doesn't still value him, but it's more so she thinks by pushing him away and shutting him out, she can protect him and herself. And here are common symptoms of PTSD. A lot of them, as we can see, Marinette has been exhibiting during the season. Bad dreams, nightmares, aggressive behavior, always on guard, easily frightened, negative thinking, avoiding talking and thinking about her trauma, and so on. So no, she's not being mean and she's not being inconsiderate, at least not on purpose. She is simply dealing with post-traumatic stress disorder. And before you tell me, Adrian too can be said is dealing with PTSD from his father. Yes, but trauma isn't linear. There's no fixed way from how a trauma victim would act. How Adrian processes his trauma is different to how Marinette is processing her trauma because they're different people. Just because they're yin and yang and two halves of one, that doesn't mean they're carbon copies of each other and deal with their problems in the exact same way. Adrian's trauma response is feelings of abandonment. He doesn't push people away compared to Marinette who does. That doesn't mean one's trauma is more valid than the other. So now that we've spoken about Cat Blanc, it's safe to say that as helpful as Alia has been, the root of the problem hasn't been addressed. Alia can only help Marinette so much. She can only go as far as assisting Marinette with superhero related business, but not the emotional side. And that's because Marinette hasn't spoken to anyone about it. Due to this, she's bound to snap sooner or later. Marinette can only keep putting on a brave face for so long before it becomes way too overwhelming for her to bottle up. If ever I was the overthinker, I'd say there are a little clues that hint towards her widely anticipated akumatization. Throughout the season, Marinette has been shutting out the people closest to her because she believes if Hawk Moth were to somehow get to her, she'd endanger her closest companions and loved ones. She shut Luca out, she shut Cat Noir out, she shut out Alia and her friends, she even shut her parents out. She's literally isolating herself. She's also repeatedly emphasized what would happen if either her or Cat Noir were to get akumatized. And here's my evidence. Today, I learned that I need an ally who can replace me in case something happens to me one day. From now on, you'll keep the Miraculous of the Fox with you, and I'm gonna tell you everything I know. Marinette said to Alia, in case something happens to me. But what? 
I like to think of Senti Bobla and Haxan as preparation for Alia, like a practice session for what's really in store for her and Marinette. There must be a reason for why Marinette is going to start training Alia and teaching her everything she knows about being a hero and a leader. They're two different things, by the way. You can be a great hero, but a terrible leader and vice versa. If Marinette were to get akumatized, I can imagine Alia leading the team in sort of like a rescue mission. Cat Noir would mostly be there from an emotional standpoint, but also because he's the best and most experienced hero on the team. So he needs to be safe at all costs if the worst case scenario comes to be. Evidence 2. Ephemeral. But for Cat Noir and me, it's different. If we knew each other's identities, all it would take is just for one of us to be akumatized to betray the other. Marina explained to Luca about why the identities must remain a secret. If Hawkmoth got to one of us. But here's the thing, he has already, both occasions being Adrian. By getting to Adrian, he was able to get to Marinette because without the black cat holder, the ladybug holder is left unprotected and vulnerable. She cannot do both offense and defense unless she's really pushed to her limits. Which leaves me with this question and feel free to comment down your thoughts. Do you think Hawkmoth would have a higher chance of making his wish if he got to Marinette first instead of Adrian? What I'm asking is, is Hawkmoth more likely to succeed by eliminating the strategizer of the two, Ladybug, the one who comes up with the plan, or is he more likely to succeed by eliminating the combatter, Cat Noir, the one who goes one-on-one -on -one with his opponents in order for Ladybug to put her lucky charm to effective use? Whichever one Hawkmoth goes for, the other is left vulnerable. So think carefully and share your thoughts with me. I think he's more likely to succeed by getting to Marinette first, and my evidence is the episode Ladybug. We've seen that Marinette's almost akumatization was the catalyst for everyone else's akumatization. And if the one person that's supposed to save everyone can't be saved, then who's going to save her? Evidence 3. Kuruneko. When talking with Plague, Marinette yet again kept emphasizing what would happen if Hawkmoth somehow got to either Ladybug or Cat Noir. Come on now. Once or twice being mentioned is a little suspicious, but three times and possibly more is starting to feel like no coincidence. A reoccurring theme slash message I've noticed is that the more you try to avoid slash prevent something from happening, the more you're actually drifting towards it. Marinette has been doing everything in her power to avoid a repeat of Cat Blanc, and in by doing that, she inadvertently and unintentionally is falling down the road of getting akumatized. And thus, we have Princess Justice or Lady Misfortune. So, possible theories. Since Lady Noir haven't fully addressed the root of their problems, I don't think they're out of the dark yet. I'm not sure what might happen with them, because I really do think Kuroneko was just the surface level of their conflict and the tip of the iceberg. There's so many layers to their miscommunication that hasn't been talked about fully. Another theory is that Lila or Felix somehow manipulate Marinette and her crush on Adrian because they are both aware that she's in love with him. That would explain the spoiler image from the last attack of Shadow Mob, as well as this other spoiler image from an unknown episode, which is most likely Risk or Strike Back. It could be Lila and Felix teaming up and trying to trick Marinette. Plus, we also know based on the synopsis that Adrian is leaving Paris with Lila. What if Ladybug overhears a conversation about Adrian, or thinks it's Adrian but really it's Felix, and for whatever reason that conversation upsets her, thus she breaks down and de-transforms. I mean, there were literal tears in her eyes, and we know Marinette's emotions are very powerful, which is why Hawkmoth had been targeting her in Season 3. If whatever triggered her breakdown, her emotions must be so powerful even for Hawkmoth to sense. Also, from the synopsis of the finale, Hawkmoth realises that Ladybug is very cautious and never takes risks. All this time, for the past three seasons, he's been trying to get to Ladybug by weakening her with his idea of tough villains. But what better way to weaken your enemy than to just go straight for her instead? What I'm saying is, Ladybug is very calculated and is always one step ahead. No matter what villains you throw at her, she'll always outsmart them because her creativity is what gives her the edge and has her always coming out on top. But every hero has a weakness. Ladybug's weakness is that compared to Cat Noir, she plays more so on the defense position. If Hawkmoth can exploit that weakness somehow, he can get to her. Get her to not be so cautious. Corner her so she can't make up the most convoluted plans that are always a success. 
we know Ladybug isn't good with direct confrontation. The alternative option is that Marinette confesses her feelings to Adrian and he either doesn't give her an answer or he straight up rejects her. Please don't let this happen. I'm hoping this isn't the case because one, this plot line is very cheap when there are literally more complex ways to execute Marinette's accumulation. And two, it would just feel unfulfilling. Don't get me wrong, to see Marinette get heartbroken is emotional, but compared to other ways this storyline can be executed, it's just the least emotional option. Marinette thinks with her heart and not her mind. Her emotions are raw and powerful. I feel sad when Marinette feels sad, which is why I'd much rather have Princess Justice over Lady Misfortune. The difference is one is a kumatized Marinette and the other is a kumatized Ladybug. But remember, what makes Ladybug so powerful is because she's Marinette, not the other way around. Ladybug thinks with her mind, and so tactically and strategically, Lady Misfortune would be a tough villain to be. But emotionally, Princess Justice would destroy the world. Raw emotions equals raw power and raw strength, and raw power equals destructive energy. If someone is emotionally unstable, that's bound to cause chaos, which is why Cat Blanc is ultimately more powerful than Ephemeral. And not because Cat Blanc had the infinite power of destruction, but because if your emotions aren't in check, neither are your powers. I'd argue that Cat Noir's emotions are more volatile than Adrian, because yes, they're the same person, but Cat Noir tries to hide his life as Adrian and bottle up his emotions because he tries to separate his two lives so he's carrying more weight. Hawk Moth thought that because Cat Noir is his son, he'd be able to control him, but he underestimated him because you can't control an emotionally wounded and unhinged child, never mind a child with the literal power of destruction in his hands. So by that logic, and since Adrian and Marinette mirror each other, if one thinks with their heart, the other thinks with their mind, and this trait swaps depending upon which form the characters are in. If Marinette thinks with her heart and is more impulsive, then Adrian thinks with his mind. If Ladybug thinks with her mind, then Cat Noir thinks with his heart. They will always balance each other out. And because Cat Blanc was more powerful than Ephemeral, I have reason to believe Princess Justice would be more powerful than Lady Misfortune, solely because it's harder to reason with Marinette than Ladybug, since impulse and emotions drive most of Marinette's decisions. I think Princess Justice could really serve and wrap season 4 up very well. I doubt this would actually happen since Thomas Asterix has made it very clear Marinette's okumatization is impossible. But here's the thing, <laughs> I don't believe him. You can make any storyline work, provided it makes sense and serve the characters well. Princess Justice will show us how vulnerable Marinette can really get. She's certainly not invincible, and for the past three seasons, the show hasn't really shown her struggle significantly, which to me is the most unrealistic aspect of the series. Realistically speaking, Marinette would have cracked under pressure by season 2, at least. But then again, it's only been about a few months in their timeline, so whatever. Regardless, she's still human. She's still a kid. She has weaknesses that are bound to be exploited by her enemy. Princess Justice would be incredible. But now I want to hear your thoughts. What did you think of this video? What are your theories? Would you prefer Princess Justice or Lady Misfortune? Let me know down in the comments below. If you're new here, please feel free to subscribe to my channel and give this video a like. As for today, that's it from me and I'll see you again next time. Bye!